been looking at um, a series that we're calling The Church. Again, we're going to be finishing this series up next week. And I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I know it's been helpful for me to think thing, some of these things through. Um, next week, I'll kind of do a recap and, and really try to bring it all together. So today, we're just going to kind of jump right in. Uh, today, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, my hope and prayer for you is that you will have your mind stretched a little bit. Today, I'm going to kind of give you a concept that's a little bit out there. Um, and so I'm going to try to stretch you a little bit if you're a Christian. Maybe you're going to hear something you've never thought about or heard before. So it's going to, it's going to take a little bit of work. If you're not a Christian, maybe you're an atheist or you're agnostic or you're a skeptic or something like that. Um, it's, this is going to be a little bit of a harder message for you in some ways. But my hope and prayer for you is not that you understand in detail what I'm saying, but more that you would just be brought into the kind of the idea or the kind of fascination or even kind of imagine what I'm kind of saying and let that kind of just draw you in a little bit, okay? So I'm talking a little bit broadly today in some ways and, um, and so it's, my point is I'm just trying to set you up for that. That's all I'm doing, okay? So the text I want to use is from 2 Corinthians. And I told you on the front end of this this series that we're not going through a book or something like that. I'm kind of cherry picking, okay? I'm kind of cherry picking some Bible verses today. And so if you want to take notes and maybe make sure that I'm actually staying in the context of what the Bible is actually trying to say, don't be afraid to do that. I know some of you grew up in churches that did this all the time and you don't like that. So I'm telling you on the front end, that's what I'm doing this morning. Second Corinthians, so even though I'm going to read this, I'm going to preach with a lot of different verses today, okay? Second Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 17. Maybe 16, maybe 16. Well, let me just turn around. Verse 17. Therefore... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation or creature. That's the the thrust of today's message. If we're in Christ, we are a new creation or a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespass against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake... He made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, Jesus, we might become, we might become the righteousness of God. Can I pray? And then I'm going to kind of try to unpack this a little bit. Lord, thank you for this this moment in time that you've brought us to. You know, I thank God of, you didn't call us to be alive 200 years ago. You didn't call us to be alive in 200 years from now. You've called us to wake up this morning and be alive this morning. And you've called us to Porter, Texas, to be sitting in a white chair um, in a particular church, in a particular place, listening to a particular message. Why, Why have you orchestrated all of this, God? Why is this so? And God, we just trust that you have been and are working today to make it so that this is the moment you want us in. And so over this next time, God, I just pray that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds to really hearing what you want us to hear this morning. God, I pray that you would humble us 
Um, humble us so that we might s- allow ourselves to be influenced, transformed by your word. Do that work in us, Lord, that only your spirit can do. Please do that now. God, we beg of you to work in power. Show up, God. And God, I pray for myself that, that I would be able to get this message kind of out of the fuzzy and into the clear uh, so that we'd actually just hear you clearly today. I pray this boldly in Jesus' name. Amen. The church, here's, here's the connection to the series. The church... The church is where, now just first of all, I got like two points today. One is new creation. The second kind of point is resurrection. So within this context of new creation, I want you to hear this. The church is where God is already doing his new creation stuff. Just just soak on it for a second. You guys, just settle down, you know. The church, now I already defined what the church is. I'm not talking about the building. You got to, you know, you got to be here so you can hear all the stuff the past couple weeks. The church is the people of God gathered together and going and all the stuff we talked about. Um, I'm going to kind of recap that next week, but The church is where God is already doing some of his new creation stuff. It's like God is taking that which is kind of, think Pinocchio. Think Pinocchio. You got the little wooden boy, right? And then what happens? There comes a moment in the movie where Pinocchio begins to Put on flesh. He starts to turn into this real boy. I'm a real boy. Right? I'm a real boy. I feel like I kind of got that one. I got that pretty good. I'm a real boy. Yeah. He starts to put on this kind of the flesh. See, when we are connected to Jesus, when we are connected to Jesus, Jesus begins. And so when we're connected to Jesus, we're connected also to the body, to the church. And Jesus, what he starts to do in us is he starts to make us new. In Christ, we are a new creation. That's what Paul said from our reading today. We are New, we're a new creature. We put on, we go from like a wooden boy to we put on flesh kind of feel to it. It's something new's going on. And this is in connection with Jesus Christ. His spirit, when his spirit comes upon us, okay, he starts to do something new in you. The Spirit working new creation stuff already in you. I want to take us to a couple Bible verses. I just want to look at a couple of these, okay? So you can write these down if you want or take a picture or whatever you want to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. We read that. A new creation. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus says, now, John is fascinating to follow here because John starts with new creation-like language. John starts with, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God, right? And then John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus says, unless a man is born again, you got to, there's a born againness. There's a new, you know, when you were first born, you weren't, I mean, now I'm not talking conception, stuff like that, but yeah, all of it together, you weren't, and then you are. You're a new creation that God makes. And when we're born again, 
There's a new creation thing going on. And see, John ties this together beautifully. All through John's gospel, there's a theme of new creation stuff. And in John chapter 20, I already preached on this a couple weeks ago, but in John chapter 20, Jesus comes to the disciples in the upper room, and what does he do? He breathes on them, right? (sighs) Breathes on them the Holy Spirit. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. What is that an image of? What is that a picture of? Go back to Genesis chapter 2, right? When When God forms man, he forms the man. He's making Adam. He forms the man. And then what does it say he does? He breathes into Adam the breath of life to make him a a creature, to make him a creation. And here we have Jesus breathing upon the disciples, recreating, new creation kind of stuff. Follow me here. Just stay with me for a little bit. In about five minutes, you can start zoning out if I haven't kind of connected a little bit. Look at um, Genesis Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse, uh, no, 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 not Genesis, Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even Now, this is Paul articulating it a little bit differently. Even when we were dead. What What do you do if you're dead? Nothing. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. He makes us alive. (sighs) Breathes into us the breath of life. He gives to us his spirit. Born again. Taking the Pinocchio and, (sighs) and the woodenness starts to put on The realness. See, what we're really dealing with here in today's message is almost like, especially I'm talking to you if you're an atheist or something like that right now. What we're especially dealing with is what does it really mean to be human? See, because you care about a question like this. Christians, sometimes we don't think about it like this, but you do if you're an atheist. What does it actually mean to be human? See, and we would start to articulate that the greatest picture of what it means to be human is actually when, by looking at Jesus. We look at Jesus. who Post-resurrection, Jesus rises from the dead and we start to get a sense that, that what it really means to be human is going to be in some way connected to Jesus. New creation stuff. That I need his spirit inside of me. Because otherwise, I feel wooden. I feel like a, I I don't feel like I'm, I'm, you know, fully real yet. Um, I'd encourage you to read this book. C.S. Lewis says this. C.S. Lewis, In Mere Christianity... It's a great book, especially if you're an atheist or agnostic or something like that. I just, I hand this book out to to people that are just kind of wondering about their faith or something. He says this, because one of the things I like about C.S. Lewis is at one time he was an atheist. And so he says this, "The the real son of God is at your side. And he would articulate that even now in this moment. He's at your side. He is beginning to turn you into something, into the same kind of thing as himself. Now, we wouldn't articulate that we will be like Jesus in that we will be God. There's always a distinction between the creator and the creation. That will always be for all of eternity. And yet we will become like him. He's turning you into the same kind of thing as himself. He is beginning, so to speak, and this is just C.S. Lewis in in his imaginative kind of way, to inject his kind of life and thought into you. Beginning to turn the tin soldier, he doesn't use Pinocchio, he talks about like a tin soldier, like a statue. Beginning to turn the tin soldier into a live man. 
The part of you that does not like this is the part that is still tin. What does this mean to have a, be, be a new creation? To be moving from the tin man into the real man, the real woman. This is kind of what we've been talking about. I, I taught on this a couple weeks ago, the difference between justification and sanctification. See, already in Christ, follow me on this, already in Christ, you are a new creation. In Christ, you are a new creation. And yet, at the same time, at the exact same time, that you, even though you're fully a new creation in Christ, in this life, as we live as also sinners, as we still deal with the woodenness and the tinness, as we still deal with this stuff that we know to be true in us still too, as we do that, God is also doing that new creation in us. This is what we would call sanctification. He's making us holy. He's still dealing with us and working with us, working with our sin and our brokenness. You see that? I mean, this is all over the New Testament. Look at, look at 2 Corinthians verse four, chapter 4, verse 16. I don't know if we got it up on the screen. Did we get it in? Yep, perfect. Chapter 4, because I just asked them to put this in. Verse 16. This would be an example of like the movement towards sanctification. He says this, So we do not lose heart, though our outer self, or that could be translated as outer man, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self, the new creation that's ours in Christ, but then watch this, even though he's, he says the new creation that's in Christ, justified, saved by grace through faith, is being, what does he say? renewed day by day. There's still work that he's doing in us. What is that work that he's doing in us? That's new creation kind of work that he's doing in us. He's bringing, let's follow, hold baby. This, he's bringing heaven down into you. I'm pushing the boundaries a little bit there. He's bringing down to you that which we will have completely and fully one day. And we can start to already experience some of these things even now. I know I'm going deep and hard. Do you see where it's kind of deep today? But this is, this is all over Scripture. The newness that he's doing in us. See, let me bring to my main thought for the day. The church is where God is already beginning to do the new. See, when we think of new heavens and new earth, if, you're a, if you know your Bible a little bit, you go to like uh, Revelation chapter 21, where the new heavens come down, the new earth that God makes. And we're always like, okay, that's way far off when Jesus comes back one day. That'll come one day. Right now, we just kind of is what it is. No, 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 no. Yes, there is a sense in which that is true. He is coming back. There is new heavens. There is new earth. But that newness, he's already doing in us now. And that is to be found in the church, the people of God. See, my, my, like, I could ask you a question like this to try to make this a little more like, uh, you're not really talking to my real life, Seth. Well, what if I ask you a question like this? Are you sick of the old stuff? Are you just sick of the old stuff? See, we know the old, don't we? We know about death. We've experienced death. We've experienced pain. We've experienced brokenness and pride and selfishness we've 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 uh, we've experienced this this inability to get like satisfied with the stuff of this world we just keep going after more and more of it you know our family we're starting to read through c.s lewis's uh the lion the witch and the wardrobe right now and the witch gives edmund uh, the the little snacks last night we just read it he gives edmund the little the little 
Turkish delight. And, and he just keeps eating it and keeps eating it and keeps eating it and keeps eating it until C.S. Lewis says it would end up killing him. And he's never satisfied. Well, that's the enemy. That's how the enemy works, just to continue to give you and more and more and more. And you just, you're never satisfied because it's not the stuff we actually need. What do we actually need? We need newness of life. We need the Spirit of God in us. And so Paul will say things like, put to death the old. See, this is that sanctification word again. It's not that when you put to death the things of the old, that that then saves you or something like that. No, no. You're saved by grace through faith. Go listen to my message on justification, sanctification. But, but now we still continue to work and put to death the things of the flesh. And we walk in the Spirit. How does this happen? This is my kind of second point. Resurrection is how this happens. I think John 20 is a fantastic text to go look at and in the book of John. The other chapter in the Bible that just, man, you want to go really soak in today's message, and I almost preached on it. There's just so much in there, is Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and this is where Paul just lays this stuff out that I'm talking about. So let me read to you a little section here. Romans 8, write this down and go read this later in today's context. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. If the Spirit, and he, see, he's going to really go after here the connection between new creation and resurrection, and especially the resurrection of Jesus. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to you through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The resurrection of Jesus is both our end. Paul says, we will be like him. It is both our end and it is the, um, I don't know a better word energy or the power that actually is worked towards us, in us, for our own new creationness. Go look at Ephesians chapter 1. See, you guys, I know you look at me like you're making stuff up. Ephesians chapter 1. And I know some of you don't like cherry picking stuff, so you just go read the context and then you, you decide if I'm way off in my contextualizing. I don't think I am. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe? The power that's worked towards you who believe. What is this power? What does it say? According to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father. The resurrection, this is why when we say something like, Christ is risen, and we say, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. What are we saying? We're saying, Christ is risen, yes, but that means something to me. That that does something to me. The fact Christ rose from the dead means that I too can have life. And I can have it now and one day. That's that now not yetness that I've preached here before. Uh huh. New creation. His resurrection power is being worked towards you today. Okay, what does this look like? I know you guys don't like, I can see it today, but just focus here. What does this look like? See, what it looks like is the stuff I've been teaching the past couple weeks. It looks like a church that begins to love each other. See, it begins to look like a church that cares for each other like crazy, even though I look around, I'm like, I don't even know who these people are. 
Yeah, but you're part of the body of Christ. And his spirit, as he's doing a new thing in us, begins to transform us as individuals, and it begins to transform us as a community, and all of a sudden, we begin to love each other like crazy. What else might happen? Well, what are some other things I've preached? We might actually begin to have joy within the community. We might begin to enjoy each other, even in the face of suffering and pain. We might begin to actually suffer with each other. So when somebody is suffering, I come with them and suffer with them. How can I do that? I can only do that because I'm a new creation. And I'm learning. Listen, you got to go read Romans 8 for some of this. But I'm learning to groan in this world. I'm learning to suffer alongside other believers. And we suffer together. And we don't quick, too, too quickly go through it, but we enter into it. I preached on this two weeks ago. We enter into that suffering with each other, and we just kind of stay there. Just like when Jesus wept. Just like when Jesus wept when Lazarus died. Do you remember that? Why didn't Jesus say something to the people around him? Why didn't he say something like, Lazarus is in a better place? You see the stuff we say to each other? You ever have somebody tell you that? I've had people tell me that with our little baby that died. Oh, but he's in a better place. Well, okay, fine. But why don't you enter in with me? Jesus, who knew in 30 seconds he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead and had nothing to worry about or anything, still entered into the suffering and just cried. Do you see that? Stop saying stupid stuff to people when they're suffering. Just enter in and just cry with them. This is what new creation kind of people do. Because the Spirit of God is in us and we start to live differently and heaven begins to be already here. See, the reason you are repulsed by this is because you've been taught something, even within the church, that the flesh and bodily stuff is bad and spirit stuff is good. And that's just not true. We actually believe that creation, God made it. When he created it, he said it is good. Now, is it crazy infected with sin? Yes, Is there brokenness and zits on my body and face now all the time? Yeah. And do we experience and deal with this stuff in kind of the the tin and real boy kind of way? Yeah. But God is already doing something new in you. Something new today. That's what he wants to do. He wants to deal with sin. He wants love, joy to be central to this new creation. He wants uh, uh, us to walk with each other in suffering. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. This is my last verse for us today. I'll close us off. Uh, I'll start back at verse 23. And I want you to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And to put on, this is that sanctification again, to put on the new self. Created after what? See, you've been thinking I've been making this stuff up this whole sermon. Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. This is why when, when, we, when we look to new creation stuff, we, we, we don't want to look past the resurrection of Jesus. He is, Paul says in Corinthians, he says, Jesus is the first fruits of those to be resurrected. The first fruits of that which is to come. You want to look, you want to know what, what eternal life will look like one day? Look to Jesus. Look actually at him. In the Bible, look at him. That's what it's kind of going to look like. This is why C.S. Lewis has so much fun saying things like, yeah, someday we'll probably fly and stuff like that. Why? Because Jesus ascended to the Father. I think that stuff's fun. I just think that's cool. Do I think we're going to fly someday? Absolutely. Kids hear that. That's just fun. 
He, Jesus ascended to the Father. We will meet him in the air. Yeah. New creation stuff. Okay, let me, let me just land the plane with this. If you're a Christian today, what's your call? What are you called to do? I would say something like this. If you're a Christian, you're called to repent. You're called to repent of the tinness that you experience, that you know to be true in your life. Repent of the wooden stuff that you still feel and put it to death. And then remember, repent and remember what God has done for you. That the Spirit of God is living in you and you are a new creation. Remember that today. If you're not a Christian, here's what I would, I would say to you. If you're not a Christian, I would say, repent. Repent. Um, you, you experience that woodenness. You kind of know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've not thought about it in spiritual kind of sense. But you, you, know, you know what it feels like to kind of walk through life wooden. It feels like there's got to be something more. I don't even feel like I have life. I don't know. Maybe even that's a little too spiritually sounding to that person. But I would simply say to you, repent. Repent of that woodenness. Recognize that God has so much more for you. And then maybe the same word, maybe it's remember, but I would almost go so far as to say something like realize. Realize, you know, God is right now with you. And he is opening your eyes to see. He's sighting your eyes to see something. And you're, it, maybe it looks a little blurry right now. But he's sighting your eyes to see life, new creation that, that he wants for you. And he's offering that to you. He wants to breathe into you. You might even be experiencing some of that breath kind of lately. He wants to breathe that life into you. And I'd encourage you to do what Jesus says. To be born again is to look to Jesus. Born of, you know, of water and the Spirit. What does it look like to enter into the waters of baptism? To receive from God the promises he has for you. To be made new. Is that even a desire of yours today? If not, okay. But if that's something that you kind of are leaning into, you're like, I want to be made new. That's for you already today. That's th that, this is not a message of, oh, so, you know, give your life to Jesus, come on forward, and then someday you get to go to heaven. No, no, no. Repent, look to Jesus, and today you can be made new. Wow. Let's pray. Lord, I know today kind of is, uh, it's a little deep. I think we've been talking really practical the past couple of weeks. And so what I'm trying to do today, Lord, is just show everybody that those practical things are connected to this idea that you are recreating us. You're bringing new creation stuff already into our lives. And we can already begin to experience heavenly things because of your spirit. Um, Lord, we still recognize the tinness on us, the woodenness to ourselves. We, we still experience those parts of us that just, it feels like, man, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. Lord, I just pray that you would forgive us that you would renew us, strengthen us, and pour your spirit into us today. Lord, for that person who's not a believer, who doesn't know you, I just pray for that person that you would be kind of slowly sighting their eyes to see something that they had never seen. Draw them in, Lord. Father, you say, unless you draw them, we just pray that you would draw them in this moment. Draw them to you.
and draw them into the, the new creation stuff that you're already doing. Lord, we're valuable in your sight just as creatures, just as human beings. We are valuable. You've made us. But Lord, we're so infected with this stuff called sin and we experience that. And So we thank you that you've made a way to recreate us. Thank you that this comes through the resurrection of Jesus. That's why we look to you, Jesus. We look to you. Lord, anything that maybe I've said today that's misspoken or a misstep, help nobody to have even heard it. <laughs> and um, that stuff, that deep truth stuff that you have for us, help that to just sink down deep into our hearts and live out of this new creatureness that you've given to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.